In a previous video, I built this. It's a 3D printed RC car, and I got to go pretty fast before there was a small, very minor accident. The goal is to get this thing to go 100 miles an hour, and you guys had some great suggestions on how to do this. Almost all of them were about tires, aero, and four wheel drive. Tires is the easiest thing on that list, so I'm gonna start with that. I was using these off-road tires, which were definitely not meant for high speeds. So I'm gonna try to model and 3D print my own tires, as well as test out some of these store-bought tires, which are actually meant for high speeds. I started by designing a wheel and tire in Onshape. This made it easy to plug the new wheel and tire into the assembly and make sure it wouldn't interfere with the frame or steering. Then it was time to figure out materials. Tires need to be flexible, so the logical first choice was TPU. So I got some of this very bright TPU. Look at that, it's like a big noodle. And started printing. So printing the tire with TPU, it is flexible, but it sounds kind of slippery. All right, test on the road. Yeah, that's definitely not gonna work. There's like no traction at all. So I did some research and I found this stuff sold by Colorfab called VarioShore. As the name implies, you can print it at different settings and get different levels of hardness. This stuff actually feels harder than TPU, but it should get softer when we print it. I opted to print it at 250 degrees, which gave me the softest tire possible. This stuff actually ended up being pretty easy to print with, and the prints felt kind of weird. They were sort of like foam, so this might actually work. However, before we add the new tires to the car, I wanted to test making my own gyro. I used this custom flight controller I made that runs Dreamflight, and then changed the code to compensate for any sudden movements by just steering the car. I also used it to scale the steering commands based on the throttle input. This means the faster you're going, the less sensitive the steering gets. I thought this would make the car more stable, and I think it helped a little bit, but it definitely still had some issues. The parking lot I'm doing this testing in gets very busy throughout the day, so I have to go at like 6 a.m. so it's completely empty. I'm definitely not an early morning person, and it kind of shows. All right, here we go. It is way too early for this. Let's see what this thing can do. The wheel. The wheel's over there and the car's over there. <laughs> that is not what we were looking for. <laughs> when the car crashed, the piece that acts as the hub and steering arm just ripped off the car. This has actually happened a couple times now, so this part is definitely a weak link. Due to the way the part gets printed, the steering arm is really weak from the layer lines and breaks easily. So to solve this, I'm actually gonna use resin printing. I recently got this printer from Form Labs and I have been anxious to try it out. This printer feels way too nice for me to be using, but the results looked awesome. I used a Tough 2000 resin for this and these parts actually feel pretty indestructible. So we'll see how they hold up. Now, if you wanted to print these parts, but don't have a resin printer like this, then you could use the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. They offer a ton of useful services, including 3D printing, with some pretty advanced techniques like MJF. If I were to get this piece printed out of nylon on one of their MJF machines, it only cost a couple dollars and it would be a great alternative. If you need something metal for your project, they also have CNC machining as well as a full PCB manufacturing and assembly service. If you're interested in using one of their services on one of your projects, check out the link in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. With the new part installed, we can now mount the 3D printed wheel and tire. The wheel I'm using here is actually just printed out of PLA, and then I epoxied the tire onto it. I tried to keep everything as light as possible to match the mass of the original wheels. Going out to test these showed that the car still drove pretty smooth. I also picked up a new transmitter which was actually meant for RC cars. I was hoping this would make me a better driver, but pretty quickly I proved that wasn't true. Ooh. Luckily this didn't cause any damage to the car, so we could see how these tires handled at a little bit higher speeds. Overall these things actually worked pretty well, however the car tends to get unstable above 35 miles an hour. 
This is mostly because these tires have less grip than rubber tires. However, it's also made worse by the fact that this car has very bad aerodynamics and it's only two wheel drive. Both of those I'll fix in a future video, but just for now I wanted to try some sort of low effort front end aerodynamics. So I designed this shovel looking front scoop. <laughs> Although it does look a little ridiculous, it should hopefully guide the air up over the car and then create a downforce which pushes the front tires into the ground. I went out to test this car one last time and it definitely felt a little more responsive at high speeds. However, once again, as it got towards the 50 mile per hour mark, it gets unstable and spins out. Now this parking lot has two steel poles. Those are literally the only obstacles, but I have to drive the car right between them. And this hasn't been an issue so far, but on this run, well, it became an issue. Ah, uh, yeah, that one definitely hurt a little bit to watch. Damage report. There's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Some moderate frame damage. Ouch. The damage from this was honestly less than I was expecting, considering I hit that pole going like 30 miles an hour. Now what's really interesting is that resin part that I printed didn't even break in this crash, even though it took a lot of the impact. However, a lot of the carbon fiber nylon parts absolutely shattered. So I'm really impressed with these Formlabs resin prints and I'm definitely gonna use it more in the future. It feels like a sort of a cheat code in 3D printing. At this point, I think the car needs to be completely redesigned. But before I do that, I wanna try these Armored D-Boot tires, which are actually meant for high speeds. So I printed some spacers for the axles and then mounted them on there. Taking this thing out for one last testing session, I could feel these tires had way more grip. So I was hoping to reach a new high speed and beat my previous record of 49 miles per hour. This run we got so close to the record, but only hit 46 miles per hour. But I wasn't even full throttle. Oh no, I found it. It's upside down. Hopefully everything's okay. Oh, it all looks good. Top speed was 46 miles an hour. It's not too bad. So I lined up for one last run to hopefully beat my record. This car was pretty much on its last legs and this crash showed it. The car started bouncing after hitting a bump and ended up cartwheeling down the road at over 40 miles per hour. All right, so here's all the parts I found. The GoPro took a bit of a beating, wing came off. At this point, this version of the car has done all that it can, and I'm working on a version three with better suspension, four wheel drive, more power, and a longer wheelbase to hopefully get closer to the 100 mile per hour goal. Thanks again for following along with this project and be sure to leave any suggestions below. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.